All right, while waiting on parts for the Klipsch subwoofer, I will go ahead and um, start working on this uh, TIAC reel to reel. It's a model uh, A4010S. And uh, I got this for free from a uh, guy that had it at his uh, high end audio shop, Gifted Lister Audio. Um, a uh, customer had given it to him who didn't want it anymore, and he gave it to me because he didn't want to deal with it. So, luckily, there's a guy on YouTube named uh, Jordan Peer who has uh, done a video of exactly this model and how to uh, get them running again. So, I've been, I've watched his video two or three times and will probably watch it. Uh, little bit at a time while I try to get this one working. So here we go. As I'm removing the screws for the reel tables, take a note of something here. Oh, excuse me. When you take the reel table off, there are little discs behind it. These are spacers. Note. Which I didn't have any discs behind mine. Because if you put them I'll try the other one. In, you'll get real Alright, so all I have is like little paper spacers. I'll go ahead and mark this one uh, left so I keep them straight. I grab a hold here and very carefully work this off. Let's see if I can do that. There's the inside. Yeah, like that worked. Brake pads look good. They're kind of tight though. Time to watch some more video, see what my next step is. Well, here's the remnants of the belt that was in here. You can see this thing. Some of these turned to gooey messes. This is beyond that, and it's just crumbling into, into dust. So I've dug most of that out of down there. You can see there's still a little bit here that I need to peel off. And I've been cleaning up the faceplate over here. And it was coated with, I don't know, look how dirty this thing has gotten. I think probably, I don't know, grease or oil or uh, maybe, you know, tar or something from cigarettes. It was pretty dark. And there's still a few little stains. And what I've found is that I'm using a little 4 aught steel wool with 409, just doing this. And then... Uh, rubbing it and that seems to be getting up the really tough stains. I think I'll do that on the rest of this and see if I can get it shining again. I'm starting to see more and more evidence that the original owner of this uh, TIAC reel to reel was a uh, smoker. You can see uh, I cleaned up this one. I don't know if that's going to show up. This is the reel here uh, and the braking mechanism. It's real shiny right there and then real dull and dingy right here. So this is what I've cleaned so far and then that remains to be cleaned. This one's all done over here so it's pretty shiny. So pretty much everywhere I see is kind of a yellow brownish uh, coating. I think it's uh, residual cigarette smoke. So while waiting for the uh, captain belt to show up for this uh, TIAC reel to reel. I've been doing some other things. Mostly cleaning up all the uh, controls, um, getting all the old tobacco stains off of it. And uh, also, I've powered this thing up and originally this VU meter light was uh, not working. So I ordered these uh, little LED replacements. 
Uh, I think I got those from uh, Parts Express. You get five of them in a pack. I'll show you. I'll just take this off real quick. There it goes. Let's see how it's... Uh, I'll turn it back off so you can see it. So there it is, soldered in there where the original one was. And I uh, replaced both of them so that it's uh, even lighting. So uh, everything seems to work on this. Again, this is what gums up here. This mechanism is the pinch roller um, arm. And there's a little joint right there that's gummed. So when I uh, pull that all apart to replace the uh, belt, I'll clean that up and that should be it. Uh, outside of that, everything seems to be working on this thing. Well, I finally got the uh, belts for this thing. So I'll go ahead and start uh, getting it working. So the uh, little tape counter belt, I think I can just fish back here behind uh, this reel and make those connections. For the um, this belt, the thicker one, uh, that drives a capstan. I'm going to have to take this whole assembly off and uh, unscrew it from behind, remove it out, and then uh, at the same time I'll be able to lubricate and uh, free up this uh, pinch roller assembly here, which is what happens on all these things. They get uh, gummed up and sticky. So I'll go ahead and fix that at the same time. Alright, I think I can get this belt in here. I'll just release the brake mechanism and see if I can work it around. Yeah, I think that'll work. Ah, maybe not. I can actually take these screws off over here on this side of the brake uh, drum and uh, get to go behind there, but I was trying to avoid having to do that. Let me see if I just poke it. You know, I usually leave this part of the video off of me struggling to get things done. But I got a comment from one of the viewers saying, I wish you would have shown how you did that. I'm struggling with it. So I'm going to try to. I told him, yeah, I'll try to include more of that in the future just because. I mean, it makes the videos longer, but it's more realistic. So, I think I got it behind there. I think I got it. Yep. Yeah. It probably would have been easier had I um, taken the brake loose. These are just little brake pads. See, this, uh, this releases it. 
It's just a little pad that kind of goes around and locks the reels once uh, tape motion is supposed to stop so that it doesn't go spinning and creating a bunch of loose tape on the reel. All right, well, I got it on there. Now what I got to do is probably use some tools and fish it on to the two sprockets. One way up here on the tape counter and then the other one on the back of that side of that reel. So I think I probably will turn the camera off because this is going to take me a while fiddling. But you get the idea. Let's go from here up to there. All right, and that was the easy belt, but it took me a while. I had to use a couple of these type of tools to fish that thing up here around this little pulley that drives the uh, tape counter. And then it goes down behind that uh, take up reel there, and there's another pulley on the back side of that. So now when you release the brakes and spin the uh, thing, which I can't really do, but it does drive that belt right there. So now I'm going to go ahead and replace the capstan motor um, belt, but it's going to require some disassembly. So we'll start with that. All right, I got this uh, capstan assembly off. That was a bit of a struggle, and I didn't record it, so uh, please watch Jordan Peer's excellent video on how to do that because he shows step by step. And he also shows what you have to do to get this thing off. This is what gets seized, this little bearing right here in this uh, pinch roller uh, assembly. It says you need to use heat gun and uh, soften up that um, uh, lube, lube that's in there that's uh, gotten real sticky to be able to get that off. So I'm going to do that and uh, see if I can get it off and get it cleaned out. Alright, I'm giving this a try. See if I can loosen it up a little bit. Here it comes. Just like that. It does work. That's the, the ticket is to just get this thing hot enough to loosen that old grease and get it apart. So what I'll do now, just clean everything up really good and just re-oil it and see if I can uh, Get that system to move freely. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. Pretty gooey. Some up here too. Well, this grease is really dried up. I'll clean that up and come back when it's ready to go back together. Alright, I got that all cleaned up. I'm just use a little uh, synthetic oil here on that assembly, and a little down in here. Let's see how that works. Oh, much better. I'll go ahead and lube up all the uh, contact points here too. That's pretty loose right there. That should be okay. And we'll then put the belt on and get back together. And here's all the Q-tips it took to get that thing clean. Sticky, gooey stuff. All right. So this just had a couple little spacers that go back right on there. A little clip. Uh oh. Maybe I just lost that one. Let me go see if I can find it. Alright, I was very lucky to find that little guy. It wound up I'd say probably what eight feet, ten feet over here underneath some of these uh, battery chargers. So uh, one of the risks. Let's 
see if I can get that to go back on this time without it going shooting across the floor. Back up. Okay. That should work. Now, let's get the belt on there. It has to go around this thing here. And this whole assembly has to go back together. Now, I'm going to take my time doing this again. Watch Jordan Pierce's video. He shows how to do it and knows what he's doing, and I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm going to turn the camera off just to save some battery. All right, that was not an easy task, but I got everything, uh, got the belts on and everything reassembled. Ah, a little nick there. So, uh, I think it all works. Let's try it out here. Pull this back so it thinks there's a tape on it. And everything seems to spin in the right directions. And all the solenoids are working and moving the right levers. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble everything and uh, see if it plays a tape. All right, I got the uh, tape player put back together. I discovered some issues with it. I. Uh, I had to get a tape, number one. I didn't have any reel-to-reel -reel tape or a take-up reel or the stoppers or anything. So I had to place those on order. And instead of getting a blank tape, I got a uh, tape that had some old uh, recordings on it from probably the 60s. So that works for me because that was $8 versus like $30 or $40 for a, a reel of unused tape. So that's definitely the way to go. I'm really just using this to test the machine out. And then, uh, so that was eight bucks. The take up reel was about five or six dollars. And then these little keepers I ordered, somebody actually just prints these out on their 3D printer out of like a rubberized uh, material. Now, maybe they're supposed to go like this, but I find it easier to put them on like that to hold the reel. Now, what you can notice here that this reel seems to be moving a lot. And this one moves very little and that's why there's so much tape down here in my trash can um, as I was uh, motion testing this thing I was snapping tape so what I recently or just discovered was that uh, there's supposed to be an e-clip on the under back behind here and it's missing it's allowing this reel to contact the screws on the plate and instantly stop, especially when you're coming off a of fast forward or fast reverse. So that's what's I'm pretty sure is snapping the tape. And uh, so I'll investigate that so I can fix that. Another issue I was having is on playback. Um, initially, the uh, audio off the tape was very, very quiet and a lot of noise and stuff like that in the output. That's improved with use, so I think what has happened is there is a, a little amplifier board in the uh, tape portion of the tape player. It amplifies the signals coming off of the uh, tape heads and uh, brings it to a uh, line level to be able to play. So you could play this without the amplifier. Just hook this directly up to a stereo amp and it would work. Um, when I did that, you know, it, the sound was just really... Uh, low and noisy. It didn't matter if I was going through the uh, this amplifier or directly to a stereo amplifier. Now that's improved as I've been using it so I think there's probably some bad capacitors on that amplifier maybe even a transistor or two that's uh, weak and it seems to have improved with use but I think I'm still going to have to go ahead and recap that board. Now I'll give a little demonstration here. Now here's the source with the line set kind of property for recording. Sounds really good. So this amplifier all seems to be working properly. Now I switch to tape, source, and play. 
say it's working, but the levels are much lower. Now this is much better than it was initially. I mean, there was almost no sound at all coming. You can switch directions here. Um, so I think what I'm going to have to do is go back and you know repair that amplifier board or rework on that a little bit, and um, then also fix the reel, pull that apart, and see if I can get an e-clip that'll fit it so that I can prevent it from moving in and out as much as it is. So uh, that's the next steps. I think this amplifier and the uh, tape unit is improving even more. We'll do a quick uh, test here. Actually I need to set the camera now and to start this because you need like multiple hands here. You need to hit these two buttons and hit record. Now, let's see. Let's go ahead and start some music up. So that's coming from the source. And that's coming off of the tape. So you can see the level is lower. And it's got some distortion. That's turned up all the way. That's the source. And tape. So it's working better, but it uh, definitely needs some work. All right, I got the uh, reel hub pulled off, and it's got a couple of uh, little uh, two millimeter, I guess it is, um, uh, Allen, Allen keys or Allen uh, heads in there to pull uh, that holds it on. And here you can see the uh, hub down in there. You can see that there is no e-clip on that. It is completely missing, which allows this thing to move back and forth way too much, which is the problem I was having. So this one over here is fine. So I went ahead and ordered an assortment of e-clips, both uh, metric and SAE. Hopefully I'll find one that will go on there. Well, I'm waiting for those to arrive. I'll go ahead and uh, pull out this uh, amplifier board right here. This is uh, grabbing the signal off the, uh, the heads and amplifying it. So the reed heads, both forward and reverse. So I'll pull that out and order up all these electrolytic capacitors and go ahead and replace those and see if that improves the performance of that thing a little bit. All right, I've got the uh, tape uh, playback amplifier pulled out here, and there's the schematic for it. Um, and the schematic does list all of the capacitors and the values, so I could probably go ahead and order those without too much of a trouble. What I think I might try doing before I do that is, uh, although the capacitors are probably, and they're over 50 years old, they're probably not, probably have some issues. I might try just cleaning up the contacts on this connector here first and then giving that a shot see if that improves the uh, quality of the uh, playback yeah it's not terrible it sounds okay but it's just uh, maybe some bad contacts are what's causing the problem rather than um, bad capacitors and that's certainly a lot easier to do than replacing all those guys so maybe I'll give that a try first all right, I'm going to try a little deoxid here on the edge connector. Let's see what this does. See if that cleans it up a little bit. Back when I was a uh, young engineer, yeah, I'm back in the late 70s, what we used to do on computer boards is take a, a pencil eraser and just rub these things to try to clean them up. I think this is probably a better idea, but well, it looks pretty clean. All right, maybe I'll give that a shot. See if that improves the sound quality any. 
cleaned up the contacts on that amplifier board there and plugged it back in. And here's the sound coming from it. So definitely a, still a lot of noise coming off that amplifier, so I think it needs to be rebuilt. But I found this little thing laying on the ground. It looks like it could be the E-clip that fell off the back of that. It's a little stretched out of shape, so maybe I'll try straightening that out and see if I can get it to go back on. Alright, that E-clip I found, I got installed back on the shaft here of the, uh, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the reel, reel motor. So, uh, and now it has a about the same play in it as the other one does. So I'm sure that's probably where that came from. And uh, But it was just laying down in the bottom here of the uh, machine somewhere and just fell out as I was moving it around. So I'll go ahead and put this back on and we'll give it a try, see how it moves tape. Well, I've received my Mauser order here for the capacitors that to uh, recap this um, record amplifier board. They've already started doing it. You can see there's a nice small capacitors in there that replace the big fat ones. So the modern ones are definitely much smaller. Now one thing I've noticed, and maybe this is typical, I haven't done a lot of work on these 70s vintage Japanese devices, but every single one of these capacitors that I'm pulling out is three times the value uh, that's marked on it. So here's one that's a 10 microfarad. And if we check here, it's 33 microfarads. And same thing if I pick a 50 right here and check it 165 microfarads. But then the new modern ones. This is a 10. Yeah, they're all measuring right. Yeah, you know, 10 microfarads. So, so far every single one I've pulled off has been at least three times the value that's marked on it. So that's got to be affecting how this thing works. So hopefully that's the issue with this board. But the, you know, the popping and the noise I was getting almost sounds like a transistor. So I'm hoping that's not the case because these old germanium transistors are kind of hard to find. But we'll go through and recap the whole thing and hope for the best. Alright, after uh, recapping the, uh, what do we call this, the uh, tape pad uh, preamp board. Um, this is in the tape recorder part, or the tape player itself. Um, it's working okay, but I'm still getting the, some noise off of the outputs. And I'll show that here. These uh, two output um, transistors seem to be uh, I'm seeing a lot of noise off of the outputs, but not further back in the circuit, both right and left. One side even more than the other. So let me get the Go ahead and turn this thing on. I'll show you what the output looks like. Okay, I got uh, a tape playing a one kilohertz tone that I've pre recorded. And if you look at what's coming off one of the tape heads, you can see it looks pretty good signal. And here's the other one. That looks pretty good too. One's higher than the other, but they both look okay. The problem is, when I stop this, let me reach around here and stop it. And then we crank up the sensitivity here. You can see that there's, see there's some noise there on the output. This is with the tape motion stopped. That one's not so bad, but if you look at the other one, and there's the one that's really audible. Um, it's pretty noisy. 
So I think it's probably those output transistors. Of course, you can't get those anymore. Those are, I can even read that, whatever they are. And here is the NTE equivalent of those two, the uh, 102A. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these in here and see if it gets rid of that noise on the output. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the uh, restoration on this uh, TAC A4010S uh, tape recorder. It still has uh, some issues. Still get a little bit of noise on playback. Um, it seems like it's coming from the heads themselves or from the wiring uh, from the heads out to the uh, um, preamplifier, um, the playback preamplifier. I have recapped that and replaced some of the transistors and it's improved the sound quality quite a bit but I'm still getting a little bit of noise. I also have a problem with a fast uh, forward or reverse is not latching. I have to hold that down, physically keep my finger on that and then hit stop. Otherwise if I let up, um, you know the real, uh, the tape just goes everywhere and so eh, that's an issue. But it does uh, record and play back and sounds pretty good. A little J.J. Kale album here that I recorded. If I can play back a little few seconds of that, hopefully not get a copyright strike. This is recorded at the higher speed. So it sounds really good, especially at the higher speed. So um, it's pretty much usable. I'll continue to work on it and try to make adjustments and maybe get on some of the open reel forums and uh, get some ideas on what uh, it may need but it's kind of nice to have an old uh, classic 1977 78 vintage open reel tape player and uh, well that's a, just a nice new addition nice addition to some of my old classic stuff over there so thanks for watching